This is the DK Project, broadcasting live from Top of the World Studios, hosted by Dominic King. (laughs) All right, all right, we're ready to go. We got an awesome show lined up for you tonight. I appreciate everybody joining us again. I got baby Jessica with me. How you doing tonight? (laughs) <laughs> I'm good. How is everybody doing? Good. I'm good. I don't know if anybody else is good, but they're probably going to leave comments below. So we're going to find out. <laughs> um, so real quick, I want to go over some rules of the road while I got you here. Uh, at any time, see, we're going to be touching on maybe some things that might be a little sensitive to some people. Okay. So, and and I'm probably a little more versed than most of the general public in this with this stuff because of the very nature of you know the world in which I work. Um, but we're all kind of learning. So if I say anything or I do anything, even if it's not particularly offensive to you directly, because we have some rapport, you know, you know me, um, feel free. You have a safe word at any time you can yell cut and we'll stop. And what we'll do is we'll just either back it up, finish the interview, call it a wrap, re-record something. If we got it, this is, this is being recorded. Uh, but you have the, the autonomy at any point. If anything's uncomfortable or if I say something maybe that's that might not be on the level someone else might take offense to, I just want you to stop. Okay, just tell me, cut, we'll stop, and we'll fix it, all right? Because I I know a lot of stuff. I don't know everything. I want to make sure that uh, I don't offend anyone. I certainly don't want to offend you. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. I understand. I appreciate it. Are you, of course. Absolutely. You ready to go? I'm ready. Let's go. I think I almost just broke something. <laughs> Hold on. Let me drink. Let me get a little of all right you got your bottle you got something to hydrate with okay so adult baby jessica also transgender correct yes male to female yes right so tell us a little bit and if you don't mind i want you to give us a little backstory tell us a little bit about maybe how you got into the first you want to start with how you found me we uh, people like to always tell their stories How, how did you come across me we'll start with that um, in all seriousness, I think I mostly just came across you because, of course, I was a teenager just looking at various, you know, things related to ABDL and diapers and things like that. Gotcha. And I'm pretty sure I found you just basically in Google search. I'm like, there was a picture that was on your old Instagram before it got deleted of the one where you basically had an AB basically, like, balanced on your on your arm while you were flexing. <laughs> And that picture has always stuck out to me. And I was just like, what That's I would one. give to be <laughs> in that position. Because, like, I've always been tall. I'm, like, six foot myself. But I know you're right. taller than me. Which is yes, great. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also never thought that um, I would actually even get a chance to actually reach out to you. But I figured when I found you on Instagram, just out of the oh. blue, I was just like, you know, shot in the dark. See what he'd, um, see what he'd say. Yeah, and I'm really glad that things have uh, progressed to where they're at right now. Progressed, right? Hell yeah! That's I, and listen, I know that's not easy. It, it can be intimidating. I know some people, you know, they get a little intimidated. I'm glad you reached out. Uh, we're gonna shoot together, right? You want to do some content, mm-hmm. some adult content, not YouTube or podcast related. We're gonna do some naughty stuff, right? You want to do it? Oh, absolutely. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna do that. And what we can do is we'll come we'll come up and, and we won't go through all that stuff tonight, but we'll come we'll come up with um, like a, a list of stuff. We'll go through, see what exactly we want to build into like maybe a weekend and then, you know, we'll, we'll meet up and we'll run through all those kind of things with the cameras rolling so everybody can see everything and everybody can have a good time and enjoy it. Will that be cool? Yeah. You down with that? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do that now. Tell us a little bit about your your journey uh, through ABDL, your transition, any of the stuff that you want to go. This is your moment here. I want you just to fill us in so that maybe we can learn a little bit about what it is that you do. Well, do you have a starting point in terms of topics you want me to start with? Yeah, it's on, it's on you. So if you want to start, why don't you go with um, what came first, the ABDL, the, the gender, what was the first thing? They honestly both happen at the same time. Um, when I tell people that I've always been a lifer in this community, I'm not exaggerating because some of my earliest memories I remember, I think it was like four or five, it was shortly after I was fully potty trained. Right. I basically was doing everything I could to get put back in them. And at the time, 
I didn't truly understand it. Right. I was like 13. And that's when I found the community. I was still, you know, 13, so I couldn't really right. interact with anybody. Right. But I will admit, I um, I kind of lied about my age a little bit on Sissy Kiss. Uh -huh. I went in the chat room and everything. But outside of that, I never really tried to get involved with anybody until I turned 18. Okay. That's good. Hold on. I'm going to stop you real quick, and I want you to continue in one second, so don't lose your thought. I just want to make a public announcement. We don't condone underage people getting involved. But, look, I'm not – I did the same thing. And I think a lot of people that are in that situation, you're developing sexually when you're hitting those teenage years. Your sex maps develop from 7, 8, 9 years old. By the time you're 11, 12, 13, you're really starting to figure these things out. And guess what? You know, if you're – someone that's into the things we're into, it's really hard for you to find an outlet or for you to find any information or resources or anything. So I never held that against anyone. I know a lot of people say no minors in kink and I don't really want to interact with any minors and on that level, but I, I'm, I can't tell someone else that's developing and trying to learn where the, exactly they fit in the world that they can't find the help or the resources they need. That's the kind of stuff that leads to depression and you need to look, it has to be mentally, it has to be healthy. So go ahead. We don't condone that underage interaction, but look, I'm not judging anyone. I'm not, I'm not Mr. Judge here. I'm not sitting behind a bench. So now that we're going on to, you, so you found these things together. You found, I, you discovered that maybe you weren't in the right body or maybe you were born in the wrong body, looking at the transition, doing the ABDL thing. And this kind of all came together at once. It kind of did, um, but I never really put them together until, again, like I was a teenager. But my earliest experience is having any sort of confusion or incongruency with my gender. I'd say I was about five or six. Right. Uh, my mom will tell you, like, uh, my favorite color for the longest time was pink. And, like, I carried around, like, a pink ranger toy, like, everywhere. Um, right. I remember, like... One time I was, um, I got McDonald's and you know they had the Happy Meal toys. And at one point there was a choice between a Hot Wheels and a Barbie. I wasn't supposed to get the Barbie, but I basically fought to keep that Barbie. And I remember one of my youngest experiences, I was about five years old. I think it was in kindergarten. I got in trouble because I tried to go into the girls' bathroom. And they thought, for whatever reason, I had like no intent, despite the fact that I was only five years old. When in reality, it's just like, I don't understand why I can't go in here. This feels like where I need to be. Sure. The feelings really didn't start culminating like intensely though until I was, I want to say, in the middle of middle school, shortly after I turned 13. Okay. Um, I remember I was heavily bullied. Um, everybody thought I was gay. Um, I was just essentially called queer like, for the longest time. Um, but things really started to uh, come together when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really know how to go about it because, again, I'm in the South and, you know, people kill people for that kind of thing. Sure. So I struggled a lot with it. I This is actually my second attempt at transition. My first attempt uh -huh. was about 22, I believe. 22 um, years old? Mm -hmm. I was that for about a year. Um, and I basically hit a point because at the time I was dealing with both a lot of inner dysphoria but as well as the fact um, I still live with my mom, unfortunately, right. and at the time, she was very much against it. She made things very difficult for me. I couldn't wear what I wanted around the house. She sure. still did amaze me the other day, but I'm kind of coming to terms with that. I basically forced myself back in the closet for maybe two years because I felt like that there was no path forward for me at that point. A lot of stuff um, happened in those two years, and I came back out last April, and I'm never going back in the closet ever again. Well, good for you. I'm glad to hear that, and I just... I know that it's tough because people talk about support and all that, but you, at the end of the day, you still have to deal with a lot of these things, you know, becoming a female transitioning, uh, you know, sometimes it gets lonely at night when there's no one there and you close the, you know, close the laptop sitting in bed and you think about some of this stuff. I know that can be a very heavy thing. I understand that, you know, I, because I've had my own struggles too, and they're obviously not exactly the same. And I, I wouldn't even, you know, try to pretend to, to, to understand what that would be like to go through. But this is intense, I'm sure, you know, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and, and how are things now at home? Is it, I mean, you're out now, so she she knows. 
she knows, and she says that at this point, it's more of a neutral thing. Okay. Um, like, I dress how I want at home, though, again, I still, you know, try to be courteous, because, you know, I'm not going to walk around in just panties and a bra all the time, though I will sometimes walk around in, like, panties and a t-shirt if I'm just going out to get a snack or something. Right. But she, her stance at this point is, I'm not going to get in your way, but at the same time, I'm not truly going to get behind you either. Right. And it's the least I could ask for because it's better than being in my way. Right. Instead of actively working against you. Does she also know that you're an ABDL or any of that type no. of stuff? No, 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 no. There's a reason she thinks I'm in the job interview right now. <laughs> right, look, I, I understand. So, so this is all hidden 100%. Appreciate it. <laughs> Let's hope she doesn't go on YouTube because this is going to be <laughs> thousands of people are going to see this. <laughs> if she finds somehow finds her way to your side of YouTube, then I clearly have no problems with her. She have no issues with her knowing you. <laughs> All right. So we went through a little bit of that stuff. Um, let me just do a time check. We're, we're right at about the, the transition point. We're going to go into part two. So what we'll do is hang tight. And then we're going to come back here in a second after a quick break. And we're going to part two, all right? Okay. All right, hold on. <laughs> we're going to be right back, guys. Don't go anywhere. All right. <laughs> cool. Thank you for being back with us. I appreciate you. All right, listen. Go through real quick and explain your wardrobe a little bit. See what we got going on here. What, um, you got some, some Pam Pamps on? Oh, yeah. I got uh, ABU uh, bunny hops, actually. Some premium stuff. Some ABU bunny hops. Um, what are you holding? Um, this is my stuffy. It's, um, I, I, of course, call him Satan. He is a cardboard <laughs> creature from Killstar. Right. And, and he looks it. Because they and have a, a black and red one right now, but this is, um, this was the original one that they had. That's the original. Okay. The OG. All right. And my main passy right here. Uh, it's a little for big, uh, little shield, uh, black passy. One thing you'll know about me is basically like my entire like wardrobe mostly consists of black clothing. I'm very much a goth at heart. Um, I can relate. And then you got some. Uh, what's that? What's the top you're wearing? What do you got on? Oh, it's um, it says dead, dead Riding Hood, and it's basically got like a corpse version of Little Red Riding Hood, and she's holding the wolf, a severed wolf's head on uh, in one hand, and she it's got like a bloody axe. That she's dropping and it's dripping down to say dead right. Ah, uh, gotcha. And around your neck, this um, it's actually uh, something called a Camusa shift. It's a um, of course it's a really nice necklace. It's all stainless steel, but it's also a tool that helps me with my anxiety. Okay. So you take a deep breath in, you hold it, you breathe out through it. You don't blow through it. You breathe out through it, and it extends your exhale. And it's supposed to have effects like it lowers your heart rate drops cortisol production mostly just helps you calm down and it helps me a lot especially with my actual job oh good oh that's good all right um now that we got well i wanted to get the the ensemble that you have on i wanted to see what we got wearing now that we're through some of that let's talk about real quick uh community stuff if do you have any advice for people that are maybe hitting that 18 19 20 year old range going forward or maybe later in life just figuring this stuff out and maybe some stuff that you would recommend, some advice that you would give. What kind of stuff you got for these kind of folks? Is this for ABDL or trans specifically? You can do both if you want. You're qualified on both levels. Fair. Um, if you're a young ABDL and you're basically just on the cusp of adulthood and or you just turned 18 and you're looking how to interact, uh, my best advice is basically just... If you're comfortable with it, just put yourself out there. If you have the means, um, get yourself get yourself some dips, get yourself some passies, some bottles, some stuffies, just stuff that makes you feel comfortable in your little space. And like if you feel comfortable with it, basically just set up a little profile for yourself, whether it's on Twitter, or Instagram, or Tumblr, you know, if you can find a way around the what Tumblr's been doing recently. <laughs> just whatever you gotta do to basically just create a little persona for yourself. And people will come like to that i've made a lot of friends through this community and in all serious i never would have happened if i didn't have the courage to put myself yeah out. it's kind of magnetic right and for people who are trans who are young all i can really say is just persevere i know it's hard i know there's a lot going on up here and i know there's a lot going on out there 
whether you've got a decent support network, whether or not you feel like everybody's against you. All I can tell you is it does get better. Um, I still haven't gotten on hormones yet. I actually just lost my health insurance due to just turning 26. Right, right. I, uh, if, I ba- if I let my doubts and you know my depression and all that get the better of me, I'm just going to end up back in the closet again. It's going to be an endless cycle, and you don't want that. You want to do what makes you happy and basically screw everybody else. You got to be you, right? Yeah, I, I you know I give a lot of people that advice uh, when it comes to some of this stuff, and I, and I know the the duality thing is tough. Having the you know I identify as you know this kind of person in vanilla world, and then I have all these kinks or fetishes or interests, and having that that almost a dual identity can really just rip someone apart. I know it did me. You know, I, I struggled to do that. You know, uh, having all this stuff going on, all these interests, trying to negotiate in my own head, how the hell am I going to, you know, get through all of this stuff? It's not easy. You know, I actually, I actually first discovered the kink part of this community because, like I said, I struggled with these feelings all throughout childhood in regards to being an ADL. Right. I always assumed the worst and I was beyond scared and. I've been through a lot in my childhood, don't want to go into too much detail, but I actually found that, that ABDL was a community and a kink through um, computer networks when I was actually like in a mental hospital. Right. So, kind of ironic, <laughs> thinking that, you know, I kind of re- felt the point of sanity while I was, you know, in a place where, you know, people who are mentally unstable. No, well, it's a place where you can find that stability or that, you know, that spot in your head, you know what I mean? I... I... I've had my own. Sh- I've had my own struggles. I'm more or less just surprised that the, that the site wasn't blocked. They <laughs> well, didn't. They didn't know. But that's, you know, I don't know. ABDL is just kind of one of those things. Uh, I, I don't know that it's on everybody's radar. I don't know. It's, it's definitely getting more visibility as of late um, with all these, you know, shocking documentaries and everything. It's more yeah. or less just about the light that they put us in. Right. That's how they want to make that kind of come off. When they're sitting there producing this content, they're out there with the camera crews and everything, the story. I mean, they can really tell a story that's shot one way. They can tell it 4,000 different ways. And whatever way they, that they decide they want to spin it, essentially, they can spin that story any way that they want. Um, I remember, I, I can't remember if his name was Stanley. One of these guys came out and was doing this thing. And, uh, you know, a senator was watching it and all of a sudden he's like, this is terrible. This guy's on welfare and all kinds of stuff and started using that as a political punching bag. But a lot of that came from what was produced at TLC and the way that they shot it. And they knew that it was going to be, the shock factor was going to be off the chain. They knew that. That's exactly why they did it. Addiction. What's that? I'm guessing it was something along the lines of my strange addiction. Yeah, probably more than like, I can't remember exactly, but. What I've learned with uh, mainstream media is that they will basically do whatever they can to get themselves better ratings, whether or not. Yeah, of course. Or not. Yeah, no, they don't look. Their their job is money. Their job is to produce as much money as they can, and they don't care who they run over in the process of doing it. I mean, I know uh, I, a few of my friends, myself included, have been um, invited on to do MTV and all that kind of stuff. And that's the first thing that goes through your head. Like, I can't allow someone else to follow me around and tell my story for me because it's going to get bent out of hell, you know, just to tell the story that is going to make them the most money. They're just going to twist it up. So you can't really look at it and say, "Eh, you know, I'll I'll do that. I'll do that. Sure, of course. Whatever. You know, I used to have an Instagram account. I have one now, a small one. I think you saw the the, the one I have now. But I used to have one with 10,000 followers on it. Uh, a few years ago and I stopped using it. I didn't go on it much and it got hacked. Somebody started spamming. I think it was like a, like Russian hackers or something or, you know, whatever they, and they started spamming all over the place. So it got, ended up getting deleted, but I used to be real big on Instagram. I used to do a lot on there. Uh, I, I don't now I tried like getting back into some of it, but you know, they're, they're after me. They don't like me. <laughs> that was H play after dark, right? Uh, my old Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's. I, I followed that one for a while. Yeah, that was uh, that was years ago. Uh, yeah, that was it. H play after dark. The the Instagram it was changed. It used to be uh, the Dominic King, I believe, or or might have been Dominic King. I don't remember. 
And then I changed it to Age Play After Dark and then started another one with the Dominic King name. Um, but they both got to beat it. Huh? Was that the one I found you at? He, no, the the Dominic King one. They both got deleted. I opened a new Dominic King one. Actually, Arella Bella, Arella Bell. I don't know how the hell you pronounce her name. On yeah, is she on Twitter? I have no idea. She actually made my Instagram the one when I came back. She made it after Capcom last year for me. And I never really used it. Uh, I posted a few things on there, like a hundred followers, but she made it for me because she got tired of trying to chat with me on on Kick. So she made it for me, sent me the con the the sign in details, and um, that's the account I was using until it got deleted a few weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. Uh, okay, cool. So we're just about done with this segment. Did you have anything else that you wanted to add? Nothing personally. I'm just enjoying the. Cool. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back with part three. All right. Stay tuned, everybody. Get I, feel bad for blowing, I feel bad for blowing up your social media so much. I'm just really happy I get to talk to you. <laughs> I know you're busy a lot. <laughs> you know, even with these interviews, I'm shooting you know, three of these today. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to get you on because I think it's important that we I, I can't just have the same kind of people. I want to diversify. And I think you're going to speak to a real segment of, you know, not just kids, youngsters out there, 20 somethings, Generation Z's, uh, people coming, youngsters coming up now that, that are learning these things. And you kind of went through a lot of this stuff. I think a lot of people can relate to it. I just think that's really important. I'm glad that you're doing the interview. I do. I really appreciate you. I've been I've been very excited about doing these ever since um, ever since uh, Anne told me that uh, you did one with her. Yeah, good, good. That's yeah. That's why you're close to the top. I wanted to get you in right away. Super excited! Super excited! All right, part three. Here we go. Part three. We're gonna talk about shooting. We're gonna do a scene. We're gonna do something. We're gonna put it on the internet. It's gonna be great. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Now look, you, you got to be warned. Uh, have you seen my Pornhub? Of course. Okay, so you know that there's a chance tens of thousands of people are gonna see your bare naked ass. Bring it on. It, it look, I my game's consistent, so if you deliver, it's gonna go off. You ready? Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Ready. So we're gonna do it. Uh, we should do maybe like a weekend. I'm thinking. Gotta scratch my eyeball. Go, oh, it's just, going. My my work schedule is just really like all over the place right now, but it's also very consistent. Where basically I'm basically off most of the week. Yeah, that we can do a week. We it, a weekend for me isn't a weekend. You know, it's gonna be whatever. So don't worry about that. We just need two days essentially. We'll do like a, we'll do like a during the day, overnight, and then you know like a morning time, so we can get a few things in that are important. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what do you want to do? You want to cover spanking, right? Of course. You need a spanking. So we're going to give them cheek spank. You're mm. going to spend the whole time in diapers or five minutes? Um, preferably the whole time. Yeah, I don't think there's a choice. So you're going to go, you're going to go back in diapers. I mean, you're already in them. So Anyway, diapers, mm-hmm. spankings, and then we're going to do... Did you have like a, like a role play idea or something that you wanted to shoot? Um, we just gotta kind of do daddy little girl. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm looking to get punished. I'm all, I'm looking to, you know, make a big mess in my pants. Yeah, um, you're mess in pants. <laughs> I'm, daddy little girl honestly sounds really great. Um, like I said, I'm very new to this. I've never made any sort of content on my own outside of you know my own just homemade videos of just myself. So. I I'm understand. Very much just open to collaboration. Whatever we come up with, I'm sure it'll be a blast. Yeah, we'll have a lot of fun shooting it. Um, and that'll also give you something, too, for uh, to start your own portfolio. Other people can see what you do. You can show them your content. I know you yeah. said you were looking to, to, to get more into some of this stuff, and it give you an opportunity to do that. So that I think that's good, too. Now, you're the. Networking is definitely a big uh, motivation for me to do this. Because I'm you're really in- get in this industry. Good. 
I'm excited. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it, but we're gonna swoop in and get the the things worked out. You're actually I've talked to four people. I'm not gonna say where, but they're all in your state, including you. Four people in your state uh, in the last week. And one, two, and I've it, I've done interviews with three of you. <laughs> So I guess there's just a lot of freaks down there. I don't know what's going on. It's weird because my actual area, it's the community for this is dead. As yeah, as well. that's funny. You're number three. You're the third interview I've done from your state. I'm not a very big state, but I just thought that was funny. All right. So we got some of that stuff out of the way. We're going to do a, a little bit of shooting. We're going to do some punishment. We're going to do some spanking, um, some diapies and diapy change time. Do we leave anything out? Are you are you into bondage? Did you want to get yourself hoisted up? You want to do some know. role play? I'm, I'm open to trying new things. My Have you thing, you've never done it before? My only thing is I'm also asexual, but just really kinky. So, like gotcha. actual like you know, not really my thing. But you know, but this <laughs> kind of stuff bring it on, <laughs> and we can always discuss limits and stuff later on. Yeah, we don't have to do that on camera, at least not with what we're going to share with the entire planet. All right, so <laughs> we're going to do that. We decided what we want to shoot. Do you – an outline type of stuff. Um, where can people find you in case they're interested about you know, connecting, maybe meeting, or learning more about you? Where can, where can you be found? Um, well, on Instagram, I am ABBL Stinker, A-B-B-L, spelled all that with the word Stinker, all one word, no spaces or anything, no underscore. Right. Dang the Twitter. Um, and on Tumblr, it's stinky butt forever. <laughs> it was ABDL stinker, but of course I was a victim of the Tumblr purge. Right. And I'm also the same name on that. I gotcha. That's all the places. All right, we're just about done. Did you have anything else that you wanted to share with everybody before we jump off? Go follow DK's content. And when <sighs> I'm on there, hopefully I'm going to change the game for you. <laughs> i appreciate you so much thank you so much all right we're gonna take off everybody thank you to our our guest baby jessica i appreciate you all for coming out and checking out the show we're gonna be back i got some great content coming up thank you so much i really appreciate you doing this with us of course bye everybody <laughs> i'll talk to you soon